all other humans, subtle changes in our DNA. What makes us different from other primates? S bigger changes in our DNA, but not by much. So what I want to do is talk about our evolutionary history and talk about mutations that may have been the key thing that made us us, that separated us from the other primates. So what this series is called, the chromosomal mutations and their evolutionary relationships or evolutionary legacy. Brought to you by Curious Rainland, where science literacy will make America great. Okay, so before we do this, we should probably review um, real quickly uh, what exactly is a mutation, it's a change in the DNA. They can be helpful, harmful, or no effect at all. There's tons of, of, of micro mutations we have all the time, and, but they don't have any impact on us. One single base out of place could be harmful. It could change the amino acid sequences that are coded for. And that's one of the things we should talk about. There's change in DNA, but what DNA is the change made in? And that's what we've learned. Um, in, I'm, in the video, what Darwin didn't know, they went into great detail about explaining things about gene expression and gene switches and the Hox genes that do embryonic development. And you can change a gene, but that gene... Uh, may code be a coding gene or not. The non-coding ones are g incredibly valuable. That's why you can have all the same genes, but you don't express those genes at the same time and the same frequency, or dur or the timing during embryonic development, which is key. So let's let's dive back into this. So here, there's a gene sequence, and these are the two types. Now I did a video on that elaborated on point mutations, which are single gene mutations, versus chromosomal. So chromosomal is what I want to focus on, because that's where we see you know, the large increase in information over our evolutionary history. Um, just a reminder, they are harmful, they're beneficial. And one of the things my students often ask is, well, is that a harmful mutation? you got to separate yourself from like horror movies and sci-fi and stuff. Um, basically, we are the favorable mutations. The genes that made it to you have been passed on the, and the selection pressure that's shifted them and nipped and tucked them to the from way back to the beginning to where we are now they're the beneficial mutations because they helped you survive your environment quick little review now I'm using basic chromosomal mutation but I'm really going to focus on duplication and this one called translocation and there's a special type that we believe has had a huge impact on where we are now okay so I'm going to focus on um, duplication and, uh, well, there's deletion. That, we know that can be harmful. Um, a lot of times you end up getting like crit to chew or cry the cat where you lose a segment of a chromosome. But duplication, we know duplication can be harmful. If you have an extra 21, you have Down syndrome, or extra 13, you have Patals. So I'm going to show how that can happen and how someone who can contribute to it, can, it can't harm them. Okay. Um, Translocation. Let's, let's talk about this. The chromosomal mutation, there's really two parts are to this evolutionary le legacy. Duplication caused the increase in coding information. And what is that coding information? Okay. So, again, duplication, a piece of a chromosome. Well, take a look at this. If you, you look at these little red dots, you're going to notice that there are a segment of a gene, and we actually have the name of the gene. I'm going to try and pronounce it properly. And You'll notice there's, in humans, we have three copies of the gene, or two extra copies. It doesn't show up in chimpanzees or orangutans, or closest relatives. And this is the name of the gene, the slit robo rho GTPase activating protein. All right, now what does it do? So here, I'm going to switch and show you the website where I got this from. This is a peer-reviewed paper. Um, so here's the gene, and it duplicated about 3.4 million years ago, and it duplicated and then uh, there was another duplication and let's look at the paper and so this paper uh, was published in uh, 2012 uh, it was peer-reviewed and what I did is just I'm gonna open up Word document I cut and pasted it into this um, Word document just so you can see the impact you know what, really what's the big deal so here's two parts now I'm if you want to pause it read through it but here's the big Thing about this particular gene. The belief and what the evidence shows is this gene contributes to neurocortex expansion. This is the increasing in our nervous system 
into our, our brain's neurocortex, all right? And what this helped us transition from osteopathesis to the homo sapiens or all the different homos that would exist and later in, ending with us. So this gene, uh, it's a duplication error, but it seems like this duplication error on chromosome one is maybe the reason we are where we are with our neural and our cranial capacity and our ability to do everything in that other primates have not been able to do. All right? And so what I want to, before I shift to the other part, just want to, I highlighted this part. This period of evolution it can be associated with the expansion of the neural cortex. All right? This is the use of tools. And this is a game changer for our species, being able to build, all right? Um, so that's one of the things, and it is consistent with what the evidence shows for the Neanderthals or the, or the Denisovians, which are the Asian version of it, right? So all carrying this gene, that duplication error, uh, and so that's a duplication error that maybe is the reason why I'm able to do this video and talk to you right now. So let's go back to my PowerPoint. And so we've talked about um, pretty much a duplication error. And what I want to do now is talk about uh, another type of error. So, so far, we've talked about this duplication allowed for increased cranial capacity. In the video, what Darwin didn't know, they, t they, they talk about another uh, mutation that may have contributed to the bite radius, all right, this weakened muscle which allowed for the growth place to increase. I would really like to see some research on that, but I'm just going to mention that now. I'll elaborate later. Uh, what I feel is this is going to be a three-part video. I'm going to do a video on chromosome 2, and then I'm going to do a video on really what is the what do we know about those differences. So now let's talk about um, fusion of chromosomes. All right. Now let's talk about fusion of chromosomes. And does that cause a loss of information? So I gotta explain a couple things, things first. So here's uh, part two of this video, which is chromosome mutations, the evolutionary legacy fusion of chromosomes. So earlier I mentioned this, and what all the evidence shows is that there's something called a Robertsonian translocation. It's a special type. Now, I have all the links in the description, and I'm going to show a little demonstration in, in a second. But we know that this occurs. So if we talk about this fusion event of our, of our ancestors, a lot of people say, oh, if you, if you change chromosomes, you're going to cause errors. Well, yes, these, this can be another way of causing Down syndrome. We know Down syndrome can happen from a non-disjunction when the chromosomes don't separate. But they fuse, and that causes a problem. But there are, there are times when it doesn't cause a problem. So let's look at that. For, in order to understand this, you understand that you got to understand that chromosomes have tubers. you got the part below a centromere called the Q arm, which is usually the longer arm. And you have the part above, which is called the P arm. Now, there's different types of chromosomes. If you look at a carrier type, you'll see. Now, this site said, calls it, spells it this way. I've always call, pronounced them acrocentric. And these are the type. These are the type of chromosomes that, if you put them together, you don't lose the information. You're going to have a big problem if you um, take these two and put them together. So, just if you want to pause the video a couple of times, I'm not going to read through it just to show you you um, that I got this from this website. There's um, it's a rearrangement. It's a fusion. Whole long arms of two acrocentric chromosomes. So that's the first requirement. There's two types: balanced versus unbalanced. Unbalance is going to mean that that person is going to pass that trait on without harming their offspring. Unbalance could lead to various genetic disorders. Right? The acro acrocentric chromosomes, ac acrocentric chromosomes, result in no problems for the person carrying it. Now, that's part of the evolutionary legacies. Uh, the fusion that made our sec our second chromosome. Well, it didn't harm us, and it got passed on, and we dropped from 48 chromosomes to 46. But I'll, I'm going to do another video on that. So, but what we, what we see today, we always look at what we know today to study the past. It's, it wasn't it wasn't a freak event. It's not like that fusion event in our common ancestor that's when we split from chimpanzees and other other ones was like an anomaly. It happens all the day. About one in a thousand people might have this Robertsonium translocation. They're normally they're healthy, healthy and they don't have any problems, but they do have to have genetic screening to make sure they don't pass on possible issues to their children. 
What we see is chromosome 13 and 14 fusing, which could lead to patal, or we see 21 and 14 or 21 and 22, which could lead to what's called trisomy 21, which is widely known as Down syndrome. So let's take a look at this. All right, so here's Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Here's Patel's uh, trisomy of 13. So how does it actually happen? Okay, and again, that's the most frequent. And so here's 20. I'm going to focus on this. Uh, here's 21 attaching to 14. And this is what here's a karyotype, normal karyotype, and then this is what will happen if you had a translocation. So take a look. You see this chromosome moves up and attaches here. Now they only got one chromosome there because their 21 is there. Genotypically or uh, gen uh, karyotype wise, you would, or diploid number, you'd probably call this person uh, 45 chromosomes. Now, the question is do you lose any genes when this happens? This person is actually going to, could be normal, but they're a carrier for potential issues. So let's, let me do this. Let me go to and show you a couple examples. And watch this. So here's here's the here's how this actually happens. Let me try and show what's going on here. So here's a male karyotype, and what I want to do is show a couple possibilities for this person's child if the Robertsonian um, translocation occurs. So watch. Here's it kind of moves up here, kind of rotates, and there we go. Now we have that's how the picture you just saw. So all right, what's going on here? I'm going to go ahead and advance to the next slide. And now, et cetera, I have made. Now, when this person does meiosis, these homologous chromosomes separate, they might send this chromosome with this chromosome, and they're not going to have a problem. If they send this chromosome and this one, they might have a problem. So I'm going to show you a couple of scenarios. And the whole purpose of showing you this is to show how the fusion event that made our, our chromosome 2 could have happened and how it could be a benefit, not a harm, for that organism, that pre-human, that actually inherited that. I shouldn't say human because it's evolution affects populations, not individuals. So during meiosis, take a look. This, so if this chromosome 14 and the 21 get sent, that person's, and you know, this is the, the Y chromosome, so this is a male, and then let's assume their partner has a normal karyotype, they're going to have a normal karyotype. So this is a person who has that fused chromosome that could have a normal karyotype. Okay, here's an, so here is again. Now watch with this example. In this case, they didn't send the 21, but they sent the uh, they're called the carry the fused chromosome. So they got a 21. Their partner is going to send a 21. This person's child would have a would have a normal karyotype, but they'd be a carrier of the of the location of the trans Robertsonian translocation, and they would they could potentially. Uh, their children could pass it on, but their child would be would have a normal karyotype. Now, if they send this chromosome and this chromosome, well, here it is. Now you got 21, 21, and then the part the mother of this ch potential child is going to have 21. So these two right here, the next, the, you know, add in a chromosome, chromosome, you'll see. A, a, um, you'll see a 14, like they should, but you see a 21, you'll see another 21, so that's your 1, 2, 3, and that would be cause Down syndrome. All right? So back to the PowerPoint. This can cause harm, and the evidence is there, but it also cannot. So the evolutionary legacy of going from 46 chromosomes to 48 to 46 is possibly explained by a Robertsonian translocation, which we see today. It just doesn't happen with those chromosomes. But that's the reduction. How did we go from 40, 48 to 46? Now, I shouldn't put the chimpanzee here. I should put the karyotype of our common ancestor, where the chimpanzee continued with this, but the humans, we had two chromosomes that fused. And they were smaller. They're actually the common ancestors number 12 and 13 fuse together to make our chromosome 2. And I'm going to do another video that elaborates on that. Chromosome 2. All right. So to recap, the evolutionary legacy of chromosomal mutations is duplication, which caused the increase in coding information and possibly cranial capacity, increased cranial capacity, and the reduction of chromosomes from 48 to 46. All right. There we go. Brought to you by Curious Randland. 
And so what I want to do next is do a video that kind of talks about how that fusion event happens and just some predictions I'm hoping that the science community will do to further elaborate and show our evolutionary history and we actually are now able to point out at what time genes have emerged or mutations have occurred. Thanks for watching.